Just on, on, on Jack Stevens, uh, got two extra games. I think there was some concern it might be four. So overall, how how do you feel about that? Um, <clears throat> well, I think uh, obviously they've, they've drawn a line in the sand, um, the Premier League and the FA, and. Um, so I think as long as everyone's treated the same, then it has to, you know, we have to accept it is what it is. I think Jack's really um, accepting that he made a mistake and uh, he asked for an in-person hearing so he could apologise and, and make sure that was the case because he's a, he's a very, very good human being. Um, so he's frustrated with himself and disappointed and we're frustrated to not, to not have him available, to be without him because he helps us. So, um, yeah, I think it is what it is. And I think obviously we'll be watching now as a club to make sure that everyone is treated in the, in the same way. And if it is, then obviously we have to accept it and move on. Like you have spoken to him about the whole, whole incident. Jack? Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of uh, dialogue about it and we were heavily involved in the in the process, um, myself and Mark Bitcom. Um, and yeah, Jack went down there and, and, and as I said, had it, you know, got told off and he accepted everything and apologised and he meant it. And uh, it could have been worse. It's still disappointing, it's still frustrating, but it could have been worse. So um, he will be back as and when he's back. Have you had your tin hat on this week? From from all the outside noise, I don't own a tin hat, so uh, no. I think you have to accept everything as a manager. I think um, I genuinely don't listen to very much of it. I think we have enough noise in our own minds as managers, trying to pick the right team, trying to make sure we give the right info, watch the opposition, um, all of that, manage and balance that. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't really pay any attention to any of that. I didn't last year when we went 25 games unbeaten, and I don't now. So. Uh, and that's, that, that's part of my own growth, I guess, as a human being and as a person involved in football. Um, as a player, you listen and, and um, the early stage of social media, you have a look and see what people are saying very, very long time ago. And uh, then you realise actually what it's going to be and what it's turning into and, and what it's used for. And um, how valuable that is, is not very valuable. So um, everyone will have an opinion. The people's uh, opinion that matters are my bosses and the owners of the club and the people inside that I work with every day. So as long as I am aware of that and what they feel um, and we're all working together, then everything else is really um, noise and irrelevant um, to, to my position right now. And on that then, the bosses, what have they said to you about how they feel at the moment? We're only six games into the season, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I think we're all frustrated. We're all winners and we all want to, you know... Um, whether it's in football or in business and in other areas uh, of life, we have an ownership group that are, are very much winners um, and have been very successful and want this football club to be so successful. And um, But also have a real awareness of where the club was at. So when we first walked into the door, I don't think they recognised or didn't identify with the team that they had or the club that they had at that point because they'd been fairly new here. Um, so now we're a bit further down the line, a year and a bit in. Um, is the club in a much better place than it was culturally? Yes, definitely. Do we have some real things to build on and, and some fundamentals on and off the pitch that we're, we're really clear on? Um, yeah, we do. And so I think big picture, everyone understands where we're trying to get to and where we're going and how we're going to do it. But of course, then you have to win football matches. So no one is um, happy that we haven't won yet, myself more than anyone. So they probably feel as frustrated as I do, but also they've been so supportive. They want to work through things together in the same way as they did last year, when it was going really well, when it wasn't. The communication line's always really open and honest, and um, I really enjoy being here, and hopefully they enjoy having us here. And as long as we're all on the same page and honest, I think it's all you can ever ask for, well, I think, from an ownership um, perspective. And I, they've been really brilliant with me. It's football. At a time when, you know, I'm sure you'd agree you need a good performance, a good result, some points... You go to a place which is probably one of the hardest places in the world right now to go to. Yeah, yeah, I watched them on Tuesday night and they were outstanding. And um, So like what Mikel and his coaching staff have done with that team is incredible. Um, with, with that club and the identity of it and the feeling of it. Um, but like they had some bumps in the road to get there and some real pain early on to get there. Um, and they stuck with it and they gave it time and patience and perseverance. And they have such a clear way of doing things. I think we have real clarity in what we want to do. It's not, it's not like completely different style to Arsenal, but different. A lot of similarities, of course, but very different. Um, and uh, I think they're a real testament to perseverance, patience and clarity and what it can bring you. And I think um, 
is a really good example for us in the same way Bournemouth were, the team we played on Monday night, the pain that they went through early on with their manager in the Premier League, um, Andoni and the job he's done there. And uh, now they're really difficult to play against in their in their way. So we have to make sure we become really, really difficult to play against and even more clear and stronger in our way. And for half an hour, really, on Monday, because we started the game well, and then second half, actually, the courage the lads showed to play like that, 3-0 uh, down away from home on TV, I'm really proud of them for that. And I'm really grateful to them because they didn't give up. And it would be really easy, I think, if a team is lacking in spirit and fight, it would be really easy to just down tools at that point. And... Um, they didn't, and actually, we actually played some really brilliant football, but it was just too far gone at that point. So, for half an hour, between 15 minutes and 45, we saw a lot of stuff we didn't really um, recognise or identify with on the pitch, and they felt the same, the players, and that was just dealing with another setback of conceding a goal, a quick free kick. So, we have to find a way to deal with those things, because there are going to be some difficult moments, I'm sure, at the Emirates on Saturday. So, um, it's about growing, it's about learning, and we have to show that we've learnt from, from Monday, however that looks. You alluded to that quite rightly, that people forget that earlier on in his Arsenal career, the pressure was on and how Mikel Arteta, who many people thought he was going to lose his mm-hmm. job, they stuck with him and, and look where they are now. Is that, is that a lesson for, for everybody? Yeah, I think it's, it's about having conviction in what you do. Um, it's about having strength of character to ignore the noise and stay on path. And I think... Um, yeah, I generally... I really believe, like, if it if, if there's... If it's not difficult, or if it's not a bit painful, or there's not some bumps in the road, it's probably a path you, sh- you don't really want to be on, to be honest, if it's really easy. So, um, yeah, they stuck with it in the same way. Like if you look at any top manager that's had a really difficult time or a team, Sir Alex early on in his tenure at Manchester United, and that, you know, all of that, it goes back, it's not just that. And, um, yeah, I think you, if you have something you really believe in, you stick with it, right? And you try and be adaptable and flexible. And that's what we're trying to do. And we're learning so much so quickly in the Premier League. We are only six games in. There's a lot of teams with maybe the same points as us, two or three more points. It all can change so quickly. And we have a big challenge on Saturday for sure. And uh, we have to go into the international break feeling much better about ourselves than we did on, on Monday night, I think. And that's about putting in a performance that we're proud of. And if we do that, then we have a chance of getting a result in the same way you do in any football match. Thanks, mate. Good luck. Thank you. Paul? Russell, managers famously have very little time to enjoy wins, dwell on defeats. When you came out on Monday, the hurt you felt, you, you voiced it, and it was, it was so clear. How straightforward was it getting rid of that hurt this week? Um, well, I think there's always like a balance. So, so the players know that um, I feel a lot, and the same way I did after Ipswich, in a very different way, and the same way I did after Ipswich. Like, so every game gives you a different feeling, and you have to separate which one is maybe a bit of pride and a bit of ego, so on... On Monday night, I was so disappointed with that half an hour, and so it taints everything else about how you feel, and because that's where the damage is done. So um, I, I think we're always really honest with the players; they're always really honest with themselves. But by the time we come in on Tuesday, we have to work and we have to focus on the process and um, explain and understand why we felt how we felt, all of us together, myself included. So uh, no, I think we we looked at it, we watched it a couple of times. We learn as much as we can from it and then we're trying to prepare the guys to make sure we're better than that and, and to not feel like that again. Like I said, for that half an hour period, it just just didn't recognise us at all and I want, to, I want to know that we are trying to be us and maintaining courage and aggression intensity. We just lacked in every department, really. Um, but then as a leader, I have to accept responsibility for that. Is it the team I picked? Is it the, the way we set up? Is it the um, detail we gave? We didn't prepare them well enough. So, um, yeah... It's uh, my responsibility to make sure that we actually learn from it. We don't just get overcome and just swallowed up in the emotion, the feeling of it, because then it becomes pointless. And then you're bouncing around week to week just purely on emotion. When you win, it's all great. When you lose, it's terrible. Um, and I hated that when I was a player, when I was in an environment where if you win, everything's great. If you don't, there's a problem and the feeling changes all the time. So, yeah, let's be aware of the feeling. We understand it. We'll work through it but the process has to remain the same and the way we treat the players has to remain the same and that's with honesty and, and being open with them and, and hopefully them understanding that actually it's to try and help us all move forward and to grow together as a team. <coughs> when, when you talked through aspects of the game, presumably in here on, on Tuesday, how were the players? Are they just sort of quiet and listening? not making eye contact? Are they apologetic? Are they fighting back? What, what, what I think every player is different, but I think um, 
when when you stand up there and you're honest with them and you can show a bit of vulnerability to them and you you can um, and it's always been that way and they know they have a voice. I think if they really strongly feel something, they'll tell us. Um, but I don't think Tuesday was a day for that. I think Tuesday was a day for us to all feel a little bit of pain watching it again and showing the stuff that really hurt us. And then we finished on showing the stuff in the second half in particular in the start of the game that was really, really good and could have helped us if we carried on doing that during the rest of the game. So, um, yeah, no, they're really, uh, honestly, they're a brilliant group to work with. We love working with them. I think we have a really brilliant and uh, beautiful environment with them in, in enabling them to air their opinion and for us to grow together and to always understand it's never ever personal, it's always professional when we're in this room because we're trying to be better. And then of course you have some one-to-one -one chats that becomes really personal and uh, in terms of how they feel, how you feel, what's needed. And um, But they're ongoing whether you win, lose or draw, that's ongoing throughout the, throughout the season. As far as on the grass this week, have you seen the, the squad you recognise and have, have points been proven by some of these players? I saw that in the second half on Monday. I just didn't couldn't get over the feeling of that half hour and the damage that was done in that period so um, I saw that in the second half and I said that to them that wasn't easy so they showed big character in the second half um, big fight big willingness to actually try and dig, dig ourselves out of a hole and that's all I asked for at half time and then they've trained really really well there's a limit to what you can do after a Monday night game in terms of the next couple of days recovery but today everyone's training properly and uh, yeah good feel good spirit good intensity to training and now they need to make sure that we the work that we do in these couple of days and we did this morning is really um, transferred over to to uh, the Emirates on Saturday. As far as the team selection for that game the whole squad has talent but are you looking more at character and personality this weekend? I think it's just about so like we have a lot of players that are trying to learn and find their way in our system um, in the Premier League, which is not easy when they haven't played that way before, and to try and learn in a team that hasn't won yet as well is difficult. So if you're winning, it's much easier to integrate players and for them to feel it, but some of them haven't felt enough success through the pain yet on the pitch, so stuff that we're trying and that maybe a few tough moments, and then on Monday we went away from it far too quickly, and I believe that's maybe because they haven't been on the pitch long enough to feel that if you stick with it, it will, it will come good. Whereas there's guy, a lot of guys that have been here a year or, or more now and um, that have felt that and know that they need to stick with the, with the detail and, and trust the work that they do. So I think there's a balance of talent, always a balance of talent, character, and then the opposition. Um, I've got no doubt with the character in this squad, after everything we've been through together and the guys we've brought in because we bring them in for a reason, they want to be part of this, that we'll all get through it together. And when we do, it'll be, it'll be brilliant. And it's a long old season. Um, and we haven't quite found flow yet consistently and when we have there's been real moments of promise and enough to give the players enough feeling I think that's the that's the feeling amongst the group is that they can really impact things and get some really brilliant results and surprise some people but now it's just about piecing it together and, and um, we have to just sharpen up a little bit around certain moments like quick free kick on Monday night we walk away from the ball turn our back and then it's one, you're 1-0 down and it's such a difficult position to be in when, after you start the game well so uh, yeah it's a um, it's a process they're evolving all the time we're trying to t tweak and adapt and find out what is best for us and what works and I'm convinced we'll do that You mentioned on Monday how Bournemouth had out fouled you I think 20-10 to 10. if you commit more fouls this weekend you'll give the best set piece team in the country and the world many more free kick opportunities how what sort of shape you went to yeah I think that? Bournemouth fouled us a lot but we didn't have many free kicks in their final third so it depends where you foul I guess and where the contact is but that wasn't the point it was about I'm not saying to our team we need to foul more but there needs to be way more contact than there was on Monday especially against Arsenal because they're one of the best at it they're one of the best so uh, the Premier League in terms of talent um, and ability everyone will talk about but the physicality and the aggression and the mentality of the players is completely different. It's the biggest difference. It's not, it's not just talent. So um, it's the mentality of like when they're going into a duel, they're really, you know, that's it. There's only one thing that can happen is they take the ball or their opponent ends up on the floor. And I don't think we're quiet. We weren't there on Monday at all. Um, so we, we need to live there because this team last year was built on being so aggressive without the ball and so aggressive with the ball. And when we lack the aggression and then the bit of courage we lacked on Monday for that half an hour as well because second half they showed bundles of it we showed you know loads of courage but it was a bit late but um, if we can bring both 
I really believe we have a chance against anyone. Specifically about Arsenal's set piece threat, you know, are you making progress in that department? Yeah, well, we got undone by a quick one, which is a bit of a different scenario. But yeah, I've, um, we have a group of people that are working very hard on analysing that and trying to negate that in the best way we possibly can. And um, yeah, the players are really aware. And if we give away some corners and free kicks, we have to be ready to stand up to it and, and defend it properly. That's the same at any level, but especially against a team with some players who um, attack the ball so well. So like they are real consistent with it, but it's their mentality that makes them such a threat. Nothing else, obviously the quality of delivery, but their mentality to actually go and put their head on it and score is is incredible. So um, we have to match that with every bit we have to fight and, and stop that. Just to finish, any team news, any fresh injuries or anything? Um, no, I don't think so. No, I think it's pretty much as is. Will Smallbone not quite back fit yet. Camel Dean the same. So hopefully after the international break, we'll have Will definitely available and, and maybe Camel Dean as well. So, um, but apart from that, everyone is pretty much the same. Thank you. But Russell, you've spoken about the, the good spells and you also said you'd hoped you'd ended the first goal against problem at Man United and then it came back against Bournemouth. So that fragile confidence, it seems, from the outside that they play well and then they get stung. Mm. And then, so what are the triggers they need to do to not let that happen? What are those sort of the mental triggers or maybe team triggers on the pitch with each other? Or is there anything? Yeah, I think um, just about being aware of the situation and trying to manage that in the best way we possibly can. And uh, the situation will change. But I think it's about at that moment recognizing you have a difficult you're having a difficult time. So what's really important at that point is about being together and being difficult to play against. And we weren't difficult enough to play against on on Monday. So whatever the style of play um, after they scored, it was all just a little bit too easy, a little bit slow, um, and we have to we have to avoid that. So like Man U was different. It's two set plays, and we should have defended the second phase better. Um, and, but then the other night it was just a very, very different, different energy in the team once we conceded, and that comes when you you haven't won a game yet, and the frustration you feel about that. So, yeah, we're speaking to the guys about it. We'll work through it as in the same way we did last year, and um, I've got no doubt they're growing through it and they're learning from it and their experience. Unfortunately, sometimes you just have to experience a bit of pain to to really understand what's really important, and um, our younger players in particular will will certainly be better for it. And you're confident. They will learn and can grow and can keep getting better. Yeah, yeah. They learned all last season and grew all last season, and I'm convinced they'll do exactly the same again because they're willing to. I think learning is about being curious and be about being willing to. Not they will have a capacity to learn, and they're all willing to and want to. So um, yeah, I've got no doubt that'll be fine. It's been, obviously, we know you've got quite a big squad, but you've, you've mentioned how hard it is to leave some players out in the past that were with you last season and stuff, and you thought, talked on Monday about the possibility. Has this week been reflected with that on the training ground? In other words, how competitive has it been? Because you must have been looking for players to come and say, box, put me in the team. Yeah, well, training with the guys that didn't play on Tuesday was outstanding, really good. Um, and then carried that on over the last couple of days as well. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's so difficult, isn't it? You get accused of being too loyal to some players and then they come out and you still don't pick up result and then you know, well, maybe you've been harsh on that player. And um, so I think it's always a balance about, you know, trust, opposition and, and talent and character and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, we'll pick the team that we feel is the best one, mate, to win to win a game on, on Saturday. That'll be it. But I've got, honestly, I really, we have so many players um, and so many of them can, can help us. I know that all of them, you know, and they all feel they can help us and impact the team. But... It's part of the job. You have to make some really tough decisions. And um, but honestly, no one is like you know. Paul's shown that. Paul's been out of the squad and it was talked about leaving for however long. And he's now back on the bench because he deserves to be the way he trains, the hunger he trains with, the attitude, the mentality. Um, so I think it goes to show that no one is ever completely out. And um, it's up to them guys to make sure they're part of it. Just finally, are you? More worried about getting things right at the back or getting more damage done at the top? Because, or is it a bit of both? Because it has to be, because that's football. Yeah, I think um, we have a, we have to defend a lot on Monday night for that half hour because we didn't look after the ball anywhere near well enough. We didn't play in behind them after the first 15 minutes when we got in twice. Um, so there was no balance in our game, really. It, was, it wasn't it was good enough on both fronts. So then if you are not going to be clean on the ball, you need to be really aggressive in the way you hunt it and defend properly. But we just got caught in between both, so um, we have to avoid that. So 
I think we have a, an idea of how we can try and hurt Arsenal always because we, we want to go there and try and be the team we want to be for sure. Um, but there are going to be moments we have to really defend and dig in properly and and uh, be resilient and accept that they may have a bit of the ball and do all of that um, and make sure we do that really well. And also, like we have to find find some joy in the, in the in the tough moments and f- be excited about defending the set play. Be excited about uh, defending the box. Be excited about um, you know counter attacking opportunity. But and and probably you know as excited we as we get with all the build up and when we play through and we beat a press but it needs to be a balance we need to find a bit of joy in both really and um, we did that last year we became so hard to play against and now we have to find a way to do that again you mentioned uh, there's quite a lot of teams on similar points to you at the moment there's, I mean five teams haven't won a game yet it's a very rare situation in the Premier League after six games and what does that say about the division and I suppose the competition right now mm. I think he probably says how tough it is and um, how, um, I don't know, I think there's, there's some new managers in the league, so people getting used to the way um, that they, their coaches want to play and all that stuff. Obviously, the promoted teams come up and all, we're all working out, one of them with a new manager, so we're all working out uh, how best to adapt and evolve in the Premier League and, and without losing what gets you there. So um, I think that's always an interesting transition uh, period for any team that gets promoted, as it was when I was a player. So you're finding your feet and, and feeling your way in. Um, so I think I don't think it's any one thing. And then I think also the strength of the the top of the league is, I think it grows every single year, and the gap is becomes very big and it's very difficult. But um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be so close all season. And I think, like I said, one win. If you end up with back-to-back wins at some point, it just makes such a big difference to um, how it all looks. So we're frustrated we are on one point. We're frustrated we haven't won a game. But also we have loads to be excited about and loads to feel positive about. I don't think anyone, fans, and I bumped into a few yesterday afternoon and they've been amazing when I have done. Um, but fans, owners, players, staff, I don't think anyone thought it was going to be easy. Um, but I also still feel we really believe that we can achieve what we want to achieve. It's not done in the first month or two of the season. So uh, we need to keep adapting, keep growing, keep evolving. And um, yeah, with time and patience, we'll, we'll be OK. I really believe that. What's a difficult spell? You just mentioned that bumping into fans. I mean, what are those conversations like? And how have they received? It's been good. Like, I think um, when you're a manager, you, you take a club and, and I think you just try and whenever you leave, whenever that's going to be, you leave them in a better place. Are we in a better place than we were? Over a year ago when we first walked in, I, I believe so. I think the owners believe so. I think the players know so. Um, I think the supporters hopefully will feel that, although albeit we're in a tough tough moment right now. But um, I've not been too unhappy of too much of it, apart that half an hour on Monday night I didn't like, but I also understand. But uh, I think they've, shown, they've seen enough signs, the supporters, to really believe that the team can when it gets going and when it finally gets that, you know, that monkey off the back of winning the, winning the game it can really grow and, and do something and, and be a team that they, they they are proud of. So, yeah, most of the comments have been really positive about they love the team and, and what we did last year and hope we get given time to build and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, then sometimes we have a picture and we walk away happy and sometimes we don't. We just shake hands and then maybe some of them say that and go straight on Twitter and say what a, yeah, what a diff- different experience it was. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. But they've been great, honestly, the fans. Even the ones on... Monday night, they 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 cheered all the way through. And a bit frustrated at the end, which I understand completely, but they were they were great. You said a couple of weeks ago to us that perhaps one of the most important things about why your team's got better every season is because they develop that understanding. They know exactly where their teammates going to be. They have that trust and that love. Do you think it's a fair criticism to say that making a system change like did on Monday night is counterproductive to that? Uh, no, not really, because we played that system a lot. Um, we played it a fair bit last season. At times, we we build up like that. I think the formation would have changed as we got through the thirds. We just spent, didn't spend long enough in their in their final third. Um, so no, the, and the guys have played together and worked on it in training. So we had like eight days or whatever to work on it in training. So it's not like it was really alien to them. And it was about assessing the opposition and um, and like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if it works and everyone you know speaks about all oh, the changes you make, but when you're not, yeah. So maybe get what you're trying to find something to really. Um, 
hurt one opposition, but I don't, I don't think it's a problem. The players know it. And if you sat here on the tactics board for ages and asked them where they need to be at when, um, but the occasion and the moment took over, really, so it sort of negated any any tactics. When I look back, I maybe could have, after the second goal, maybe made a sub or two to really change and, and stop the flow of the game. Um, so that's my learning, I guess. But never a nice feeling to be able to have to do that in the first half. But it, looking back, I should have, so I take responsibility for that. But um, yeah, in terms of like being counterproductive and the shape and system and all that, now they all play together enough. The concept doesn't um, change. We play back five sometimes, back three, back four. Sometimes four in the top line, sometimes one, sometimes two. So no, the concept is the most important bit, not really for the formation, I don't think. I think after the game, you said to me that you want the team to be more aggressive, to score more goals, obviously to win more games. How, how do you do that? Obviously, this weekend's going to be tough. Um, well, I think like we're one of the um, lowest performers in terms of chance conversion. So we've created a lot, in, well, you know, relatively for the Premier League. Um, but we haven't make, made the most of that, so we have to keep doing the things that have got us there and um, keep believing in what we're doing. Some principles will always be there regardless of who we're playing against. Well, most will, but then we'll have to tweak and work out which ones will be really effective and what's priority. But I think the guys just have to keep believing in what they're doing and be willing to really make the best most of that moment. We have some exceptionally talented players that maybe there's that bit of tension in the last action right now. Um, so I need to find a way just to... Yeah, free them up and, and keep them doing what they've done since they were young young kids and just run and play and score and enjoy themselves. And I don't think we found enough joy in anything on Monday night. Just n no real, we didn't play with any real feeling. It was just a bit of a tense um, first half after the first 15 minutes. And then the second half, as I said, they, they played a bit, a bit looser, a bit freer in the build. And then it was the final third where we couldn't really um, create enough. So... Yeah, we need to keep looking at that and making sure we put it right. You're really positive about Ross Stewart after the game. Um, obviously, we all know that the journey has been on to get to this point. You sort of hinted or suggested maybe you felt like you should have started. Um, is he ready to start the match? Well, I probably should have. Well, looking back now, because it's really easy of hindsight, but should have played with A9, whether that's Ross, uh, Paul, Adam, um, whoever it is, Cam. So, yeah, I think uh, he did great. I think it's a very different ask for him to start at the Emirates after his journey and stuff, but we'll wait and see. I think he played really, really well. He's trained really well, and now we have a big decision to make on the, on the team. Just very quickly, if I can, just on Ben Berrett and Diaz, he's taken a little bit of flack. Um, I think when he joined, I thought it should be a bargain, brilliant sign. I think it still could be. Um, but I've looked at his stats. He's had one shot on target since he's been there. He's averaging four touches in the box every 90 minutes. I mean, how do you get him into areas where he's affecting the game like he did at Sheffield United? Yeah, I think... Um, just keep developing his understanding why he needs to be where he needs to be at certain times. That's what I'm saying. We've got a lot of players trying to learn and and develop in a certain way whilst playing in the Premier League. It's not always easy. So he's been here before but played very differently with a, um, a team that had a bit less structure in possession. So he had a bit more freedom to go there. But um, he's playing in a position now that he scored a lot of goals for Blackburn in. Um, so, yeah, I've got no doubt he'd be fine, Ben. We just need to stick with him and persevere and make sure he understands why he's doing what he's doing all the time because um, he is he's a really talented player um, and he's probably really frustrated with himself right now but um, yeah we just have to be patient and understand that for some players it's not always in the same way as our forward players last season you know we were um, a little bit at times a little bit rigid and a little bit sticky and then by the end of the season we scored a lot of goals and a lot of fluid moments and um, I've got no doubt Ben will be really, really brilliant for us. Russell, just building off that, Adam Armstrong obviously had two difficulties in the Premier League and scored more goals and assists than any player in the country last mm -hmm. season. They now find himself out of the team again. How can you kind of get him back to the person he was last season scoring goals? Um, again, by just persevering and, and working. And um, Arm is really frustrated at the moment, as he should be. Um, it's probably been a bit hard on him because. You know, we, we signed Cam and Ross has come back fit. And But um, Armour played predominantly on the right for us last season, pretty much all season. Um, so when I got asked a question about five strikers on the bench, well, Ben plays wide left, Armour plays wide right. Um, Paul and Ross are very similar profiles, so in case we need them at some point, then you have Cam. So it's like they're all very different and Armour just needs to be patient and trust that we absolutely love him still and we... we we know what he can do um, and there'll be games where we really, really need him. Um, and looking back, I should have brought him on a Monday night, so it's my fault, not his. And I've told him that 
and he hopefully accepts that whilst being frustrated he trained brilliantly and I know he's ready for us uh, whenever we need him and um, yeah he'll have a big part to play it's been a bit of a frustrating few games for him but that's football it's never it's never in a never linear it's never a straight line so um, yeah he needs to stick with it keep working hard as he has done in training and uh, use the frustration he feels now when he gets his opportunity which I'm Got no doubt he will at some point. You mentioned Paul Lanarcher a couple of times. I think he was quite clearly in the wilderness a little bit in the summer. Didn't know if he was going to be here. But is there now a temptation to to bring him on in games and to see what he offers? Because you said he's got different profiles other players. Got. Um, yeah, I think if the game dictates that we need Paul's profile and what he can bring on the pitch, then yes, I've been really impressed by him in training, his mentality to train, his willingness to to do exactly what we're asking him to do, even though it's very different to what he's done before. Um, and yeah, he's he's a real real handful with some. Unique, um, unique strength. So um, I think if the game calls on it at some point, then he's on the bench for a reason to be used. He's not there for a token. That, you know, our squad's massive, so you have to really earn your place on the bench as well. And that will change again from game to game. So um, yeah, Paul's there. He's ready to use as and when he's needed, and the, and he will be like they all will, I'm sure. Just do one more question, if I can. Joe Rebo has obviously set up the Ariba Foundation. Alfie was just chatting to him about it. You've obviously got your own as well. How good is it to see? One of your players in the squad giving back to their community. Yeah, amazing. It doesn't surprise me either. He's uh, he's one of the best like people I've ever worked with. One of the best teammates for his team. He's an amazing guy. Um, he was brilliant when he came on the pitch on Monday night. Um, so yeah, for, to, for him to set something up to help to help others doesn't surprise me one bit. And um, yeah, I'm really we're all really proud of Joe. Actually, the person he is, the journey he's been on last season, especially with us. He didn't we wasn't in the team to start. He had an injury in pre-season and then became such an important member and. Even this year, he'd been frustrated to be out of the team for a game or two, but then comes back in on Monday and does. You just know you can rely on him. So, um, yeah, he's a great guy, great person, and I'm sure he will help many, many other people on their journey. Barry Bannon's been singing Shea Shah's praise. He says he's made his game a lot easier. Is that exactly what you want from Shea? Yeah, he's probably doing Baz's running. I know Baz, so uh, he's, what is he now, 33 or 34? So, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure Shea has made his job easier. And I'm pretty sure Shea gives him the ball with a lot of love and a lot of detail and care as well. So, um, yeah. I think we watched him on uh, Tuesday night against Bristol City last night. Last night, yeah, I'm losing track of days. Um, and he did some really, really good things and um, he's learning and this is why it'll be so important for him rather than being in and around the squad here and in the team and in on the bench And because the Premier League is such a big jump. He's there, he's learning, he's playing in really, really brilliant games um, and it'll be so good for him this long period. So, uh, yeah, really pleased for him and... And I'm also uh, pleased for Barry because he's an outstanding footballer, Baz, and one of the, one of the most talented ones I played for, played with technically, and he's still going really strong. So um, him, people like him, and you know uh, Josh Wind, that's all them guys that are there that have experienced. They'll help Shay a lot. They'll help Shay a lot. So um, yeah, I hope Shay is enjoying it. Gilly spoke to him a fair bit, and um, he seems to be. So um, yeah, you just got to keep going and keep growing.